Some venture out into the winter weather for fun and games, while others head out to clear away the snow. In both cases, people are at risk of injuries. Gina Cadigan spoke to WVU Medicine about how to stay safe this winter. Winter brings on some injuries that you would typically expect in cold, snowy, and icy conditions. Uh, we see probably a, a pretty good rise in slip and falls, um, ankle and hip injuries, ankle, hip, and knee. Some are related to winter activities like skiing and snowboarding. Other common injuries come while shoveling. Back injuries can arise because it's not a common movement. In some cases, shoveling can cause an even greater injury like a heart attack. To avoid those, some might use a snowblower, but that could also lead to a traumatic hand injury because of contact with the blade. When these things happen, it's just because people have violated some of the cardinal basic absolute safety rules. The solution to avoid this injury is simple. If you never, meaning never, put your hand inside the chute of a machine that's not completely off, you won't injure your hand. Also in the winter season, people can suffer from frostbite, which is not just brought on by the temperature outside. 30 degrees is not just 30 degrees outside. 30 degrees dry, no wind is much different than 30 degrees rain, cold, wet and windy. The best way to avoid frostbite this season is to wear mittens. Experts say they're more effective at keeping your hands warm than regular gloves. But if you forgot the mittens or the gloves when you're outside this season and your hands start to get a little cold, that doesn't automatically mean it's frostbite. There's a very distinct warning sign that your body gives to you before you get to that point. As soon as you start to feel any loss of sensation, like your fingers and toes are feel like they're getting a little numb, not, not even completely numb, but the sensation is decreased, that's your body's warning sign that you need to, at that point, get your inside or get your hands and feet somewhere warm. The best way to rewarm your hands is to do it slowly. Experts say you shouldn't just stick your hands under hot water. The best way to warm up is yourself. Putting your hands under your arms, or up against your you know, belly or even on your legs and thighs, you know, if, if you're warm enough, get your whole body in a warm environment. Gina Cadigan, 12 News. Thanks, Gina. From injuries to illness, colder weather seems to bring out the cold and flu viruses. Meteorologist Khalil McIver has more on these wintry sicknesses. Khalil? Not only is staying out of the cold important in the winter months, but staying away from the cold is too. Experts at WVO Medicine say there are dozens of viruses that cause a common cold. Symptoms of the common cold include cough, sore throat, fever, and muscle aches. The symptoms are similar to those of COVID-19. Owen Lander, the emergency department director at Ruby Memorial Hospital, says that there's not much of a way to tell the difference between the common cold and COVID-19, with the exception of a COVID-19 test. To avoid getting sick with a common cold, guidelines are similar to COVID-19. Washing your hands, wearing a mask, and avoiding people who are sick. Besides the basic remedies to ward off the common cold, Lander says that taking care of ourselves is something that people don't often think about. Good sleep hygiene, being getting good sleep every night, being rested, getting a decent amount of activity or exercise in your life, eating well, all of those basically feed the army that is our immune system, which helps protect us so that we are less likely to get sick at all. And when we do get a cold or something, it tends to be less severe and last less time. If you feel something coming on, give yourself a break and rest to let your body recover. Even though flu rates were lower last year, Lander encourages people to still get their flu shots this season. We'll have the latest health tips to keep you safe on our website, WBOI.com. Reporting for the 2021 Winter Weather Special, I'm Khalil McIver. Back to you, Scott. Thanks, Khalil. In West Virginia, there are lots of activities to do outdoors, but what about during the winter time? How can you stay safe when participating in those activities during those cold temperatures? Harley Benda spoke to experts and has more. Many West Virginia residents love the outdoors and the outdoor activities the state has to offer. But we do experience all four seasons here in the Mountain State, meaning that some activities can be done in the cold, such as skiing, sledding, and your classic running and biking. So how do you keep yourself safe in those chilly outdoor conditions? I spoke to three experts from West Virginia University to find out. Brian Leary, assistant professor of exercise physiology at WVU School of Medicine, said the first thing to do to warm up is to just make sure you don't get cold in the first place. The best thing you can do to kind of warm yourself up is not to let yourself get too cold 
to begin with. So starting your exercise with the appropriate type of clothing on, making sure your head, your hands, and your body are covered and trying to dress in layers. And the layers are very important, according to George Kelly, a professor with WVU's Epidemiology in Biostatistics. Typically, the recommendation is you, that you dress in three layers. One of the things you want to do for all of these is to avoid cotton because it's not very good at breathing. Uh, when we talk about dressing in three layers, an inner layer, in other words, closest to the body, that consists of lightweight polyester um, or some type of polypropylene, a middle layer that consists of the same type of material, and then importantly, an outer layer that allows moisture to actually transfer to the air. Sometimes, though, the layers aren't enough or you just had to spend some extra time outside that you didn't expect. There are some risks you take when staying outside for too long, according to Lori Sherlock, an associate professor of exercise physiology at WVU's School of Medicine. So hypothermia is when your body dips down under your normal body temperature and you can um, have some pretty adverse reactions to that. So just being mindful of staying warm enough. Outside of uh, hypothermia, the other risk that we have to consider when we're exercising in the cold is things like frostbite. Um, rarely are we really out there long enough in our normal exercise for frostbite to become a real risk, but there are surfaces of our body that are at increased risk. And a lot of that is going to be in the face in our hands when we're exercising. These two issues don't come out of nowhere as there are warning signs, but sometimes we ignore them. We should have experienced painfulness, numbing, tingling in our fingers far before that takes place. It can be something as simple as losing, starting to lose our ability to have that level of coordination in our hands, in our lips, in our speech. Um, you may find that you are a little bit confused, so there's a mental fog associated with hypothermia, as well as slowed reactions. Um, cold feet and hands, that simple symptom of, hey, I'm getting cold. If you think you're experiencing hypothermia or frostbite, there's one simple solution to the problem. Move inside where there's warmth. What we try to do is move the person inside. Um, and if possible, you try to avoid jarring movements because it can actually trigger uh, dangerous irregular heartbeats. Kelly also recommends swapping out any wet clothing with dry, warm clothes. And there are other dangers to exercising outdoors as well, such as asthma attacks, slipping on ice, and getting lost. To learn more about all of the safety tips for outdoor activities in the wintertime, we'll have the full story on our website, WBOY.com. Reporting in Morgantown, 412 News, I'm Hartley Benda.